Hi guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics, and today is a very important day for this stuff. Uh, this stuff be iron, and uh, what do you know it? Look at this. 18 and a half stacks. As I calculated, it should be enough to finish the Transcontinental Railroad all the way to Westport. So what we're going to do now is prepare the inventory for carrying all of that stuff. The first thing we need... Actually, we're going to need these two. The first thing we're going to need, or rather the second, are two stacks of cobblestone. This is so that when we run into, uh, actually, you know what, I think I'm going to do three. So that when we uh, have to build bridges, we have a material to uh, perform easements and stuff. And so what I'm going to do now is separate my inventory uh, to get everything except the railroad stuff on one line. Now the other thing I have to do is, is check and see how many sticks we're going to need. That's what the fur logs are for. Math people, you need it. So apparently, uh, logs. 48 to be in fact. Uh, so I will go ahead and grab this one here. We want to try and minimize inventory space as much as we can, so whatever I don't need I'm going to place in here. Okay, and with this open space comes all of the iron. I'm not even going to attempt to uh, craft rails yet, because if I did, my inventory would be exploding. devised a method that would uh, effectively double the amount of usable material we get. I like seeing all that iron pass by my window. Uh, right, so are we ready? We'll use that as fuel for the train. I think we're ready. Now I'm sure it's dusk. So we're going to wait for that. Oh, yes. Uh, I've also finished off the skyscrapers and uh, capped them. You can see this one here has a peaked roof. This other one has a spire on top. Uh, this one is just a flat top. They're also now complete with, uh, complete with doors and ladders and windows. So we can actually go up inside one of these. And the plan is to uh, use some of these extra spaces for stuff that I do. Like we might be able to make one of these towers what we have in here now, the quarry processing facility with all the, the, uh, the windmills and stuff inside there. We might be able to do that inside here. And I guess we would start from the bottom and then we would might have a power room at the bottom and then we'd have a macerating station and then we'd smelt it and then we'd store it and then we'd uh, prepare it for departure, that kind of thing. So, uh, I'm going to go in here 
and if nightfall isn't going to happen, I'm going to research the next step in our railroad, the tram. Now this is different than the rest of the uh, machines in that it runs on electricity. So I need two iron wheels so I don't have uh, what I need right now. But I do have a wooden cab and a wooden frame. This stuff is easy. That I'm pretty sure is easy. That's just a piece of iron. So what it really comes down to are two electric motors and a generator. Those are going to be the hard things with the tram, and it makes sense because it's a new technology. Um, but it is still very simple, so I don't think it would be any problem for this device right here. can uh... no that's going to be the train craft guy all right i'm going to go ahead and look this up and uh i'll come back to the video uh the next morning when we depart okay so somehow i managed to put like nine windows in a row so we're getting the infinite mirror effect here well, wow, imagine what New York City would be like if they did this. I think there's a party going on in here. Uh, how many villagers can fit into a single building? Alright guys, I don't mean to crash your party. Go about your business. Alright, it's morning time. have a shooter. We need to improve the crime around here. I'm thinking maybe a sentinel. Alright, we are going all the way to the end of the railroad, so we're going to put a piece of coal in. Also almost out of water. If anyone asks why the vehicle appears reversed, uh, it's because for some reason I think my uh, neighbors pulled a prank on me. Uh, one day I came over to the railroad and found that for some reason, oops, slow down for this one. I found that the train was not on the rails, directly above ground, as if it had been brought up by a crane, a, a hole dug over where the train is parked, typically. A crane lowered, okay, yeah, a crane lowered, then brings the train out. You know, that ma makes me wonder how much we're losing to that, that spilled stuff there. 
sorry about that, brings the train out, and then puts the, I'm going to fill up with water since I'm here, and then puts the dirt back, and then sits the train over top it. I think that's what happened. It's going to be great when we can get a faster train through here. Like like uh, like I wanted. It's going to be the fastest way from the east to the west. I guess there's not much to see because of the uh, the frame rate and the fact that the train is on this side. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video until we get out to Moon River Town. Okay, we're arriving in Moon River Town. So we need to go slower. So we don't run anyone over. Should be good now. Now, somewhere along here, we'll get to the junction with the north. Uh, there it is. Central line, or whatever, whatever I'm calling it. And as I recall, we got to about 1930 or somewhere around there. Direct blocks to Westport, somewhere around there. I have to start looking out for the end of the track. That S bend there is going to be the bane of my existence when I get a faster train. the end of the line and just in time for sunset we're still at about half fuel which means that was actually a waste but that's just fine right I actually have to seek shelter now and we'll begin work in the morning dawn's here we're gonna get started now once we uh, deal with this guy I have no interest in patching holes here. Wow, 
about still running. I'm starting to think that was a waste now. Right, we'll have to be on the lookout for creepers. And we're moving. Keep the route scenic. We'll get more funding if we do. Right, it's time to craft another one. So we're going to have to s keep crafting a lot uh, until we get the inventory more empty, and then we'll craft in much larger quantities of rails. As I recall, there are a few trees that I will have to cut down. build this bridge off camera. Okay, this bridge is done. You can go ahead and uh, lay the track across it now. And we're out again. I'm going to have to leave the crafting table there temporarily because I uh, crafted too many rails. The terrain should get should start getting exciting in a uh, in a couple minutes. We'll be near the uh, near the mountains. All right, let's get that crafting table back. Seems this tree is one of the ones I selected to have cut down. Let's 
Too bad I don't have more inventory space because this is a rubber tree. Rubber is a useful byproduct. Oh, this is why I'm collecting the mushrooms. There we go. Oh, don't tell me it's getting dark already. I've only just started building. Ugh, it's getting dark. Alright, I'm gonna have to stop the build and seek shelter again. Right, next morning. I want to get quite far with this build. I'm going to take out that tree. Lovely, and I don't even have an axe. So much for getting far today. I'm now remembering the, the tree rule of Norsden land, because this is the second tree I'm cutting down and I didn't plant that tree back, I now have to plant four trees. What the heck was that? Looks like a storm is coming from that angle. Okay, one tree. Two trees. There we go. Alright, let's continue with this now. Another tree. At least we're making a super straight track. So for this tree, I only need to plant one because I planted one already, so I'm one ahead, I guess you could say. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Actually, better yet, let's just go straight all the way to there.
this looks nice. It's all like open and stuff. And instead of cutting all those trees down, I'm going to go right down here. just a shallow pond, so I'm not concerned about boat traffic here. Wow, these are great and straight. I'm going to enjoy, enjoy flying down this at full speed. Check it out. We're now closer to Westport than we are to New Venice. This would be an island. So again, I'm not concerned with clearance. But on the other side, when I leave the island, then I will have to be concerned about it. Are we still going straight? This is good timing. It looks like it's getting dark and um, I've come to another bridge. So because of time, uh, I'm going to build this bridge off screen and it does need to be high, so it's going to be difficult. Right, so I was able to, um, to bridge this water uh, here. So I was actually able to work right through the night, and we're much further ahead than we would have ordinarily been. Also, the cool thing is that bridge is on the uh, Great Lawn. It's on the Great Lawn. Oh wow! Huh. That that looks like it goes a ways down. Yep. Uh, what was I saying? We're still on that run, although it looks like it ends here. Um, that long run without a turn, which is kind of cool on the bridge. So soon the scenery should be changing to redwoods.
See, I would have figured I'd be in the redwood biome by the time I run out of material for uh, bridges and such. dirt. It's the one thing you have way too much of and not enough at the exact same time. that opens an inventory spot. Man, I'm starting to think I'm going to need to go back for this stuff. How much further is it? Yes, junction. This is where line five splits. Come on, I thought that was one block. This build is going to be so worth it, though. We're going to have a direct rail link from the east coast to the west coast. New Venice to Westport. Oh, again? And this one requires a bridge. Alright, I have no choice but to go back. There's no way I can collect this many materials. So I'm going to stop the video now, and I won't start it again until we get back to this spot, which is going to be a long time.
We're back. Wow, that took a long time. But I brought the train out here. We're now just over 1,000 miles out from Westport. Shoot. Oh yeah, real smart not bringing your pickaxe, I see. Another tree. We'll cut that one down off screen as well. Good news, everybody. I finally see, well, you can't see it because I'm on uh, shorts, but if we go back to normal, we can finally see the redwood biome which means the scenery is changing. Which means I shouldn't run out of dirt and bridge building materials. That does mean the track gets less straight.
Right, here it is, the final bridge. And here we are. I think in the interest of time, after we get a little bit of the ways through, um, the Redwood biome will go ahead and build track off screen. And then when we get to the highlights, like the passes and the tunnel, uh, I'll go ahead and show it. And uh, I think it's getting dark anyway. so might be better to do that better off screen. be very fun driving up this uh, incline here. I forgot about this tunnel. Alright, well, it's getting dark, so I'm going to stop the video and then come back uh, when it's day again. And actually, you know what? That tunnel makes perfect shelter. I was actually looking for shelter when I could have just gone into that tunnel. How did I escape that? We nearly blew up a pristine monument. And that is how you get gunpowder. Again? Stop wasting my time. Oh, good. 
I nearly shot him onto the land. Okay, you need to die. rather have it go that way. There we go, right through the tunnel. Okay, good, no mobsters. Okay, so from pretty much here, it's just normal forest going through, and I have to check and see where these things are, so I'm going to go ahead and do building off-screen now. National Monument, everyone. Lake and a crater. Crater Lake. Uh, it seems that there has been a biode impact of some kind. Oh my gosh. This is partially underground as well. Wow. What a cool place. It's surrounded on all sides by canyon walls. So I have a hunch that there was a biote impact here and the water collected over the years and formed a lake at the bottom. What a place. Okay, so we're about 500 miles from Westport now and uh, we're at a pass now. I think this is like the third pass that we're cutting through. But just to show, um, this might be the most scenic so far. Uh, we're basically going right through here, and we should be getting close to the big tunnel soon. Through the caves. Okay, so here is the entrance to the tunnel. thinking that we can just do a wooden land bridge here with um, yeah I don't see anything wrong with using both into the tunnel. And because it's night, I'll just stay inside the tunnel for the night. 
Okay, so the trains come down the track, across the bridge, and then through this tunnel. It's morning now, so we can continue. That's right. We're going to leave those in there for the tunnel lighting. And so now we have to get up this mountain. And this, I think, is the most interesting part. The combination of the bridge and tunnel, this embankment, and going over that pass, I think is the most interesting point on the entire route. And I hope my trains can navigate this path, because it is very treacherous. We'll just continue going right up here. Here we go. And just right up to the top and over the ridge. Wow, 95. This has got to be the summit of the railroad. Now, how far does this go around? Because I am against... Yeah, we're just going to go over the top. At this point, I don't want to use any more track than I have to because I don't want to run out. Okay. So here comes the track right here. We'll just lay it straight across the top of the mountain right here. 99. That is a really cool summit. So if we convert that to our uh, altitude scale. Oh wow, that's only 3,500 feet. So this is still, I guess, would be considered a relatively low pass. There are some areas that will get to like nine or 10,000, but I guess those are the mountain tops. Okay. Everything looks good, and we'll just come right back off the other side, right here. There we go. And I'm sure we saved almost a stack of rails by doing that. Wow, we're getting really close to Westport. I can see the, uh, I can see the bay sands there. Okay, so I'm going to keep laying track, and I will restart the video when we get to the sand. That's when things get interesting. One more thing. This is the descent. We're at 90 right now, and we have to go all the way down. This is going to be very fun to ride down on the train. So the sun is setting again, but here we are. This is where the track comes down to the sand. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. I'm gonna go race over to Westport to take shelter for the night. Forgot I had a bed, so I just slept there instead. Much better. Just 
still seem to have plenty of rails left. We're in the home stretch now, 230 miles left. I have to be careful here. It looks like some of the uh, sand has fallen down from time to time. This is the best kind of track laying environment. We can just race right across the terrain all the way to Westport. You know, I didn't think I'd have enough, but seeing as how there's only 150 meters left, and I have three stacks of rails, and I could easily make more than twice as much, I think we're going to do it. And there it is. We're laying the track now. Westport is just coming into view. So one thing that you'll see that's new that you probably haven't seen before is the uh, Westport airship mast, which I told you about. I built it and it basically services airships so that they can actually have a place to land because Westport isn't built up yet like New Venice. So there's no tall buildings to dock against. And there is the mast right there, just now coming out of the fog. It's funny, the first time I saw this long sand area, I'm going to think to myself, oh, I'm almost done. But then it turns out that I'm not really done because of the long distance, but you know what? Look, end of the line, you can easily make more. Uh, so, the street is supposed to go right down here. I think I'm gonna make this other, uh, actually, what does rubber wood? Ah, it turns into jungle wood. Is that what I used? Let's see what kind of wood I used. No, it's redwood. Um, that's fine. Let's use fur on the other side, and that way it'll have like a complementary color. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, here it goes. Uh, actually, here not goes. Okay. 
Where's the the road goes here? So at this point, I'm gonna start diverging because of uh, because of the uh, city area and stuff. Uh, there's got to be a water, better way to do this. Oh well. There we go, and the street will go right through there. I'm not concerned about speed anymore because uh, we're at the end, and uh, let's go ahead and make half a stack should finish it off. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Done! This track right here now goes from the Adium Ocean, Eastport in New Venice, all the way to the Ardathus Ocean Westport. This railroad is now transcontinental and the entire line is finished. So now we can send anything from one ocean to another on the land. This is a historic achievement and uh, I am very proud to have finished it off. Let's go ahead and add the last cap of Actually, cap should be uh, cobblestone. I'm going to add the cap of uh, platform here, signifying the end of the line. And we're done. You know, I'm so happy right now. I might as well, I might, might even just make myself a train just for this occasion and then ride back. Um, but as for the episode, Westport Train Station, Line 1, the end of the line, we've done it. The entire Transcontinental Railroad, direct line, 3,242 miles distance. I'm sure much longer than that on the actual rails, and we have done it. I think this is the most momentous achievement that we have completed so far to date. And I thank you guys so much for joining me. Oh. And now, as the sun sets over the Erdathus Ocean, uh, it gives us a wonderful uh, token of our achievement. Let's go ahead and get up into the Westport uh mast right now just to finish off the episode so I'm Dr. Aeronautics this is Norsden Lantaniso episode 24 the finishing of the transcontinental railroad a railroad like no other going from coast to coast And I will see you guys next time. Bye.